here on Grim Grindel. Welcome to this initial reaction video for the latest Spider-Man movie, which is also, for once, the latest installment for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's right, folks, we finally got him. He did, of course, appear as a minor role in Civil War, but it's good to actually see him finally in a full-fledged Spider-Man film, which has its rightful standing as part of the MCU. It is, of course, still a Sony film, and they really made sure you were aware of that, with a giant entire cinema screen full wide shot of the Sony logo as the first thing you see when the movie starts. But regardless, it is still through and through a Marvel Studios film, and it has the tone and feeling and comedy and action that you've likely come to expect and love from a Marvel movie. So let's get down to it. Spider-Man Homecoming. It's really, really quite funny. There were quite a few moments in the film that had the entire cinema laughing their asses off. There's a lot of cheeky humour and there's a lot of childish humour because, of course, they're back in high school. It's, I think, the youngest Spider-Man we've had so far with him being 15 years old. And it is good to see some young blood filling out the Marvel roster. The film really does play on his youth and inexperience, with it, while not really being an origin movie, we don't have to sit through the Uncle Ben thing again and him making a suit again or any of that junk. This is set after Civil War, after all, but it is sort of a coming-of-age film. We see him being a little bit overconfident in his power, we see him questioning his decisions, and we see him possibly planning to misuse his power, but then powering through, overcoming diversity, and eventually becoming the Spider-Man that we know and love. It was very interesting to see where Spider-Man fits in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, both as a character and as actually the Spider-Man franchise. I was a little bit worried that, because the film is both by Sony and the Marvel Studios, that it would be set in the MCU, but also only very loosely, but luckily that's entirely not the case. The film is extremely closely tied to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with of course, if you've seen the trailers, Iron Man being a rather large character in it, and without going into spoilers just yet, the actual setting is also very closely tied to rather large and important set pieces from previous Marvel movies. So I really did appreciate that despite it being a joint effort this film, they really did go the extra mile to make sure that it all tied in extremely closely, and it really did feel like a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, in the same way that Civil War does, with all of its extra character tie-ins. And there were other smaller references to the MCU throughout the movie, which I always enjoy because it goes to show just how integrated the Marvel Cinematic Universe is. One of my favourite was that, throughout the high school scenes, you often have Captain America popping up in recorded PSAs, giving really lame advice about puberty and sport and the importance of science and whatnot. One of my favourites of those was, you have the sports teacher playing the video of it talking about how important sports is, and then at the end the gym teacher makes some sort of flippant remark about how the state makes them show the videos, and then now Captain America is some sort of war criminal or something, making reference of course to the Civil War movie. So I thought that was a really nice little piece of attention to detail. So I think that probably establishes that it's a good MCU movie, but you Spidey fans out there might be saying, but Grimm, is it a good Spider-Man movie? And yes, as far as I'm concerned, it certainly is. Just like I said for the Wonder Woman movie, I'm quite a large Spider-Man fan. In fact, a couple of years ago, I got very hooked on the character, watched all of his movies, and watched all of the cartoons. Of all the different renditions of Spider-Man that there is, and there are definitely different versions of him, I think my favourite version of Spider-Man is when he's sarcastic, sassy with a moral core, and a bit of a geeky nerd. You know, socially awkward and all that. And that's the kind of Spider-Man we get today. And really, it's one of the better versions of it. I'm not going to say that he's the best version of Spider-Man. I mean, if you've watched a couple of seasons of a show with a character, you're a bit more attached to that one than you are of one after one movie. So I'll leave that until I've seen him in a few more movies. But he's definitely one of the better versions, and he's a very faithful rendition. They really did make sure to make this film a film that Spider-Man fans would love all the way from actually playing the classic Spider-Man theme in the introduction to Spider-Man's witty quips throughout the battle scenes. And speaking of the action scenes, they were, as you might come to expect at this point, as good as any other action scene in a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. There's strangely not much to say about it because, you know, great action is great action, but it was exciting, it was good, and it was Spider-Man, so that's all you need. I'm now going to get down into spoiler territory, so if you don't want to have any large spoilers at all, fair warning, we're about to get into it. But before I do, I'll just end for those of you about to switch off by saying it's a great movie, worth seeing, very funny, and definitely a worthy installment to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, spoiler alert, we're getting down to it. Firstly, I think this one's probably not a major spoiler because it's probably in the trailers and even probably on the poster behind me, but the villain in the movie was Vulture. 
This was a really cool decision because, as far as I remember, we've not actually seen Vulture in any Spider-Man movie. I don't really remember Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I don't think he was in it. Maybe. Was it a Rhino? Whatever. He was a really cool villain to see on the big screen, and it would be great to see a showdown between him and Falcon. Branching off from that, and I do warn you this is definitely in spoiler territory now, towards the end of the film, I believe we also got a reference to Sinister Six, or the possibility of there eventually being one. Because, once in prison, Vulture is approached and told us some friends on the outside. I might be grasping his straws, but, you know, you can only hope. Other grasping his straws included the girl on the debate team, who, towards the end of the film, told us that her nickname was MJ, or that her friends called her MJ, but I'm pretty sure her name was not Mary, so I'm not sure if she's supposed to be Mary Jane and they've just renamed her, or if it was just something I misinterpreted, but I was certainly not the only one who thought it when I was leaving the cinema. I think there was also a cheeky little reference to Deadpool, because in one scene there's a bunch of schoolgirls discussing how cute Spider-Man is, and one of them says, oh, but what if he's all gross and burnt underneath? Once again, I might be grasping at straws, but I thought that was a reference to Deadpool, and I had a little bit of a chuckle. So, even if it was not on purpose, I got a good laugh out of it. There is a rather large twist in the movie where towards the end it turns out that the bad guy is actually the father of the girl that Peter Parker has been crushing on. I really didn't see that twist coming, and it led to a pretty intense scene in a car in which he's driving the two to the prom, and they're both sort of realising what's going on. So that was fantastic, entirely came unexpected, and led to a great encounter. And of course a rather large tie-in that I talked about earlier is the fact that towards the end, the major heist that Vulture is trying to do is robbing a plane taking things from Stark Tower, which is now being abandoned and sold, in favour of the new establishment that we see in Ant-Man. I really love this tie-in, I love seeing more of Happy in the film, but I did think it was a little bit weird, and this is my only criticism, that a plane containing so many very expensive and important artefacts was not at least guarded by one Avenger. I mean, if it's got the magic belt of Thor in it, you should probably at least put Falcon on there. But whatever. That is, of course, a very, very minor gripe. Overall, Spider-Man Homecoming is an extremely enjoyable, action-packed and funny Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, which I enjoyed to such a degree that I'm probably looking forward to the next Spider-Man movie more than I'm looking forward to any next installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So if that's not an indication of how much I enjoyed it, I don't know what is. And so with all of that said and done, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle. It has recently come to my attention that the existence of my Twitter account is not exactly well publicised. So if you are on Twitter, and you want to see updates from us, come over to the Twitter account linked in the description down there, if we've got a video that's running late or we've got an update or anything like that, that's where we mention it. So it's really the place to be if you're wondering about videos or scheduling or really whatever else to do with this channel. And now I'm going to fade to black.